Welcome back, Cody is here. I'm flying from Monterey Airport to King City Airport, also called Mesa del Rey. Um, nighttime flight visibility is very good, so this ought to work out just fine. Uh, I've already set my flight level for 1,000 for the autopilot, um, so we are ready to take off. Still getting used to the pedals, but this should be fine. All right, here we go. So we'll try to gain some altitude first before getting speed up. Looks like I'm already heading kind of in the right direction. I've never been to the Mesa del Rey airport before don't know anything about it, but we'll find out when we get there. I have passed by King City, I believe. So I want to get, uh, I don't know, closer to a thousand feet. And then I'll allow autopilot to kick in, take over navigation. Got the co-pilot handling communications with the tower. See some other Xbox. Or, uh, Flight simulator users out there. Uh, there we go. Barometer adjustment. All right, so I think we're close enough. I'm going to engage autopilot, let it take over our navigation, and then once we're on course, I will slow down a little bit and then turn on flight level change. So making a sharper turn to get back in line. You look at the compass map. A little easier to see on the external view screen. But here we go. Uh, looks like we've maintained our altitude. We're dipping up and down a little bit. Uh, but I think it's safe to turn on flight level control. So let's do that. Uh, I wanted to turn the engine, I wanted to slow down first, but I can just do that by reducing the speed here. I would rather accelerate, or let's say um, climb at closer to 80, 80 knots, something like that. A little hard to adjust this, oops, while planes Dipping around. There's 84, 83, 82, 81. Okay, 80. We're set. Autopilot is taking over. It's got us on course, lifting us up. I just have to keep an eye on uh, the throttle. Um, we're flying into the wind. I think that's why we're not getting any more airspeed. Yeah, I should Call increase so much airspeed. Try 77. Tower, call 171, frequency change. Norkel approach call 171 is type Cessna Skyhawk, four miles southeast of Monterey. So I'm going to go back outside. Feet. Request clearance to transition Charlie airspace. The game is very pretty at call night. It seems to render better. I think it has less stuff to draw because it's dark. Um, first time I flew at night, I was pretty scared because I've never done that before. But um, the Garmin is so good, I basically just flew by looking at the Garmin screen and managed to land safely and everything. Don't have that one recorded, unfortunately. Okay, so we are at the speed I wanted. We're still climbing. Um, I'm going to look around a little bit, see what's around. I was almost going to go to the Carmel Valley Vintage Airport, but it was a little bit too close. I wanted something that was going to be at least 20 minutes away. Um, oh wow, that's pretty. What is that over there? Um, maybe Carmel? I don't know. 
Um, I have to either look out the window or switch to the drone to be able to zoom in on that. So I'll switch to the drone. Okay, that's, uh, I should be able to gotta use the um, keyboard keys. But I think I can zoom in on that. I, nope, can't. All right, I'll have to find out how to do that. Uh, let's go back to external camera and go back inside. Uh, 77 engine speed looks good. Uh, our altitude is 700 short of our target. Um, so this is just a bit bright. I'm going to darken this down a little bit here. Uh, no, wrong one. It's uh, this one. I think. Oh, that's the backlighting. Okay, so I need that. Uh, I know I was able to. Oh, yeah, here we go. I know I was able to do this before. Get that a little less glaring in your face. Okay, that's better. So here we are, flying along uh, at night, lots of stars. That looks like an airplane there. I wonder how accurate the star field is. Everything else is designed to be real in the game, so I'm assuming that's true with the galaxy. All right, so I kind of like to look over the dashboard sometimes, although that's not really a very pleasant view. Can't really see anything. I'm going to go back out. Oh, we're going fast because we reached our altitude and I wasn't paying attention, didn't drop the throttle, but uh, we're good anyway. So we'll drop down to, I'll get it down to around 77 and we'll just fly the rest of the way. So I'm drop it just a bit more. Garmin is going to hold altitude for us, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, but it's up to me to deal with the throttle. So, uh, midway of the throttle, where the detent is, it's often a good place to stop. Uh, it was kind of heavy. I could probably actually adjust that in the settings. So I see a couple of planes. This looks like a real plane, maybe? I don't know. And this looks like a user, but it's kind of hard to say. Um, I look around, we can probably see a few more users up there. Oh yeah, a bunch back towards the Bay Area. Um, I haven't really had any kind of a near miss with any of the other players. Somebody jumped in front of the screen once. I don't know, maybe the game dropped them in and back out of the session, but um, sorry about all the wiggling. Suddenly this tag just zipped by the screen and it disappeared. It's kind of, kind of strange. Um, there's the overhead view. Again, not much to see at night, but you can see the night lights, the street lights. Um, I've got the cabin light on at the lowest level. You can see, you just sort of barely see it. I'm going to go back inside. That allows a little bit of visibility in here, not very much. It took me a while to figure out where where those controls are. Um, there it is, okay. So you can just go over here and hit up on the wheel on the mouse. And now if I go back outside, it should be a different story. It's brighter. Um, there we go. Yeah, it's, it's somewhat brighter. I could turn the other floodlight on too, but I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go uh, Turn it back down. <clears throat> it's probably a keyboard command for this, but that's okay. 
Um, I wanted it just one or two steps above low. Okay, there we go. Okay, we're dropping an airspeed. I'm going to give it some more gas. We're still at the right altitude. I'd like to keep it around 77. So I have absolutely no flight training, but I assume that the speed changes because the air is always in a state of dynamic chaos, and so you're always having to compensate for wind moving at different speeds in different directions. Um, different humidity. I'm basically an entirely self-taught person. I taught myself to ride a bicycle by getting on top of one the first time. I had never ridden one before. There was no, um, no training wheels, anything like that. Um, I'm a software engineer, but that's, again, self-taught. Uh, I didn't take any courses for that. So I figure I can learn how to fly a plane. I've been flying airplanes in GTA 5 for a while, but it's nothing like the real thing that you get with this game. Uh, I quickly learned a whole bunch of stuff I didn't know, you know the first few flights and managed to be able to get myself off the ground without crashing and then without stalling and then actually be able to uh, gain altitude at the right time and all that sort of stuff. So. I'm learning as I go. Um, to figure out the autopilot, I watched some tutorials on YouTube. Um, maybe I should post links in the description. But they were very handy, explained uh, several of the buttons and how to use it in general and stressed especially the fact that you're always responsible for the throttle. So you gotta keep that in mind. And I often don't keep that in mind when I should. So if it wasn't for the strobe, we wouldn't really be able to tell where the airplane is. I guess there's a little tiny pilot light there in the back or something. Um, probably a nav light. It'd be nice if there was some way to cast some light on it. I don't know how you can do that. Yeah, there's the green and red nav lights in the front. Okay. In the rear. Um, yeah, so it's just really hard to see it. Now, I flew one night this late when it was a full moon, and you could see everything. It was very clear, very easy to see. So um, that's the best time to fly at night. I think if I had a better graphics card or the room was darker, I'd probably be able to see the outline of the plane. I can only see the red tail flashing. That's it. We're going a little fast. I'm going to drop it down. I'm going to try to aim towards 77. So, 23, 23 nautical miles away. Um, when I get a bit closer, I will start dropping altitude. Can't really tell what the terrain is like here, but I can look on the Garmin and get an idea of it. Oops. So, I think we don't have to deal with those hills. We just have to deal with whatever's right here. And it seems like we're high enough off the ground, but I might want to actually raise this up just a little bit. That might be a good idea. Let's go up to uh, 5,000. Get some gas so it can actually do it. Yeah, just to be safe, I'm going to get some altitude because uh, these mountains are a little scary, especially at night, of course. Um, I don't know if the real Garmin actually gives you all this detail or not. If it does, it's pretty awesome. Um, really like to see one in real life sometime. We can afford to go a little faster on the climb. One thing I need to do is I need to pay attention to the sound of the engine because that often will tell you what you need to do. And I'm trying to learn, but usually either I'm hearing a stall warning or the game is telling me am I going too fast or too slow and then I uh, make an adjustment. I 
I'm going to go back inside. Alright, so we're halfway on our climb. I can probably start descending once I reach 5,000. Just go down to maybe 2,000 as we head towards the airport. It's going to be out there on that flat land, I presume. I don't know if looking out the windows is going to show very much. Not really. Oh, that shows something. Uh, you can actually zoom in. Maybe you can figure out what that is. It just looks like a parking lot. Nothing special. Yeah, so I don't know whether to stay inside where it's nice and warm and you can see what's happening or outside where it's so pretty but you can't see anything. Uh, look at that. We are just about at altitude and the engine's going up so I can drop down to cruising speed. And yeah, once I get past these hills, I will start descending. Guess I can't really see anything if I look down. Uh, unfortunately, I'd like to be able to see what these mountains actually look like. But, um, it's, I mean, it's just doing the same rendering it's doing in the game on this map, and so that's what they look like. Let's see, take the uh, VFR map and zoom it out. Oops. You have to be careful using the wheel because uh, it doesn't always apply where you think it's applying. Okay, I'm trying to zoom out. There we go. Okay. You can get a sense for where we are in our journey. Okay, I think we're past these mountains enough to drop altitude, so let's get that process going. Again, using the mouse wheel, there's two, uh, there's two knobs here, an outer one for the thousands and an inner one for the hundreds, but it's a little tricky to tell, especially in the dark. Um, okay, so we're going 80. When I do the flight level change, it's gonna take whatever speed I'm already going at and use that as its target speed, which 80 to 82, that's fine. So Oakland I'm going to go ahead Center, and engage. Call 171, Each flight level. And it's not going to do anything until I drop the throttle down and give it a chance to build back up to 82 by descending. And there it goes. Okay. You can't see the plane, but you can see the outcome. Um, all right, so it is trying to achieve both 82 knots and 3,000 feet altitude. And once it gets close to 3,000 feet within the holding, you know, holding range, it will switch to altitude holding mode. <clears throat> I feel like I ought to be paying attention to the ATC audio, but it's a bit overwhelming. My eventual goal is to completely immerse myself in everything you have to do from checklists to all the tower traffic, um, everything, just because I think it'd be fun to go through the motions. Um, so yeah, I, th I should probably start paying attention to what they're talking about. I, I hear it a little bit, but I'm not like really following. Um, occasionally I'll hear that there's an airplane nearby and I can see it on the VFR map. Wind's a little choppy here. I'd expect that near hills. I don't know why, it just seems natural. There's uh, <coughs> matter down there that'll tend to push air up, I guess. I really wish I could look down. There's just no way to do that with the Garmin. Um, actually, you know, there might actually be a way to do that with the real thing, I don't know. Get like a, a overhead flat map. All right, so we're now at almost 3,900 feet. So halfway down our 
descent. Um, soon it ought to start showing the landing pattern guide on the screen. Um, seems like that often appears, I don't know, 10, 11 knots out from the airport, so it's probably going to do that pretty soon. As soon as I see that, I'm going to drop another 1,000 to 2,000 feet because that's where it's going to want me to enter that landing, landing pattern around. It's our speed. Yeah, still 82. So unlike climbing where I have to pull the throttle back, when we reach our target altitude, I have to push forward and give it more gas or else we'll stall. And that's probably the easiest mistake to make with the autopilot is to forget to do that, which I have done numerous occasions. So 3,500 feet, continuing to descend. The mountains are no longer an issue. The flight has become a lot more stable. Set heading into a more populated area, so I'm seeing a whole bunch more lights. Uh, the airport seems to be lit up off in the distance. Um, so yeah, any moment it's going to give me those uh, that landing guide, I think. Uh, one time I flew in somewhere and it didn't give it to me, and I didn't figure out why. I think because it was just a little rinky-dink airport or, or something. Um, all right, well, so we're zeroing in on 3,000. I will just go ahead and drop it to 2,000. We're close enough. Now it's not going to change yet because it switched to altitude hold mode, which you can tell here. So it's holding at 3,000. As soon as I hit the flight level change button, it will do the same thing. Um, I want to be going faster though than 71. Um, so let's turn that on and let's make this more like 82. Okay. Tower call 17111 miles northwest to land. Call 171 tower. Make straight in runway 11. Altimeter 29 decimal 80 wind calm. Every time I hear them say altimeter, I hit the barometer button to adjust altitude. <coughs> there we go. Okay. Cool. So I am going to disengage autopilot and take over. That ding tells you that it has been disengaged. I can't see the airplane, so I probably should fly inside. Um, it'll help me get uh, visual references with the dashboard and whatnot. And also I can see what my angle of attack is and whatever. Um, I'm going to need to climb, actually, to enter this. So, so let's give it some more gas. Let's uh, head up this hill. Uh, I can probably climb a little faster. All right, so once I get stabilized in the pattern, then I will put the flaps down and drop our speed and get us going at the speed they want us to to land, which is going to be 59, 60, something like that. Um, feels really slow when you're doing it. But those flaps, you know, they keep you up, the, keep you up in the air. Um, I think, you know, sacrificing speed for lift. Okay, so we're still getting a little bit of a climb. I would prefer to be going faster, but this is fine. We'll get there. Um, it's going to complain about me going too fast until we get to the point that I'm going 60-ish, somewhere in that range. All right, so let's um, steer into the pattern now. Okay, it's just refreshed it, which I think means we're technically being tracked in the pattern. It's a little hard to see inside. Uh, oh, well, maybe not. Maybe if you do the right thing, it's not so hard. Um, maybe I should back away just a little bit. Uh, let's see here. If I can do this with my left hand on the mouse wheel, that might be a little better. OK, so I can keep it easy eye on the angle of attack and the speed. I do need to slow down, but I want to get going in a stable way towards the runway. 
uh, which I can't really see. Um, this is where it's easier to fly outside. Uh, and I'm obviously way too high also. So I need to drop down, get back into the pattern. We're going to start going pretty fast, but I will make up for that by cutting gas. We'll use up that excess speed to keep moving forward. Um, so this might be possible from the inside. Um, I guess a real pilot would have to do that somehow, but you know, the dashboard's in the way, seems like a lot of the time. Um, we're still going way too fast. I need to, I need to do something about that. And getting a little towards critical speed, I don't want to do that. For, uh, do a little bit of climbing to try to burn up that speed. I could use the rudder a bit, that would tend to slow us down. Now, of course the flaps will, um, so it might just be time to engage the flaps and slow down. We're going a little fast for the flaps, we need to get down to that white line uh, at 82 or so, we're still, where are we, we're 84, 84, 83, okay, we're getting there, I'm gonna bring the flaps down, and we should suddenly get a lift out of that, uh, the throttle's all the way down, so I can't go any slower gas-wise, all I can do is just hold, watch the speed, Give it some gas if I start going a little bit too slow. It should have a little bit of gas. Dropping a little bit too much. Yeah, I hear that chime sometimes. I don't know what it means. It's obviously coming from the Garmin. Uh, it probably means I did something wrong. So I'll have to find out what that means. Okay, we're still going at a good speed, because we'll slow down by the time it, it makes a difference. We're slowly burning off some of our potential energy. If I can get it below 60, the <coughs> landing guides will turn color, turn uh, cyan. Yes, I know I'm going too fast. We're so close to going the right speed. It feels like we're just crawling along. It's, it, it, it's hard to believe that you could stay airborne going at this speed. But we're going a lot faster than it looks like. Um, you know, freeway speeds, I guess. Oh, well, we've got a nice stable, um, stable thing going here. Drop the engine a little bit, see if I can get down into that 59-ish range that it wants us. There we go. And then just have to be really careful to watch it to not let the plane stall, because that's that happens. Okay, I can see the runway at the other end. It looks very clear and easy to see. So we'll just keep going. Now we're not going to be able to see much of the airport during the day, but I'll uh, fly here again sometime during the day. Uh, I'm sorry, I think I said that wrong, but yeah, we're not gonna see much at night, but I'll uh, fly back here sometime during the day and look around a little bit. All right, so we're down in the 40s. I'm just trying to keep afloat but keep as close to the stall as I can without, you know, uh, ruining our chances of landing. Um, I'm really not going to know where the plane is relative to the ground unless I look outside, but I think if I can uh, turn the landing lights on, that should help. Okay. And so here we are. We're just, uh, just above stall speed. 
and to give it a little bit more gas just to make it over the last little bit. All right, I'm going to go outside, see if I can do this visually. Need a little bit more gas. Uh, we're off track. And it's really hard to tell. Yeah, not, not a great landing. Not, not a great landing. Um, I don't have damage turned on. Um, at some point when I get a little better, I'm going to do that and find out if I'm overstressing the plane. That probably would have been a fatal thing. Um, yeah, I don't know how, I don't know how to see better. I think landing at night is probably something that you just get better at slowly with practice uh, if you can't really see. I might have been able to use the Garmin. Um, there is this white line that I think is supposed to represent the ground, but you know, I don't know what, this, what these distances are. All right, well, so we're done. I'm gonna shut off the engine. Turn off the power. And that's it.